Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Now, yesterday, went into the city of Washington, D.C. We visited um, two of the Smithsonian Museums, the Air and Space Museum, as well as the Postal Museum. But not only is there a lot of great Smithsonian museums, there is actually a Smithsonian Zoo. We're at the Smithsonian's National Zoo. And I don't always visit zoos on this channel. I stop by zoos occasionally. I'm trying to, at this point, just check out some of the uh, more well-known, popular zoos in the country. It's like kind of standout zoos, which of course means, you know, if you know of a zoo that I've not been to, that you feel that uh, that I should give a visit to, that I may be interested in, leave that comment in the comment section. But today, we're here at the National Zoo, the zoo that encapsulates America. So hopefully we'll see some fun animals and uh, enjoy ourselves here in our nation's capital at the National Zoo. So please, follow me. Oh wow, look at this. We're off to a good start here. Here's the American bison. And look at that. You can see the bison slash buffalo hanging out there, eating some uh, eat some hay there in the back. This one up front is just relaxing. Now here uh, here is the question. Now I often I would get uh, comments in the comment section when I call them buffalo, people would say, that is incorrect. They are not. Buffalo. That's a buffalo. It's a water buffalo. That is an African buffalo. The American bison is a completely different species. But, um, you know, they do get called, they do get called uh, buffalo. So it says, depends on who you ask. Scientifically, American bison are not buffalo. True buffalo are only found in Africa. Culturally, culturally, the names bison and buffalo are both correct. European explorers came to North America. They called the giant creatures variety name including bisonette, boofs, and boofles, as our culture developed, the name stuck. So yeah, you know, it's scientifically, the buffaloes are the African version, but just culturally and linguistically, it's just, that's how words work. They evolve, they change, and it is proper to call the American bison the buffalo. Yes, I will die on this hill. Over here we have Panda Plaza, which uh, highlights a, uh, a sad uh, reality here at the National Zoo. Um, previously, they had uh, giant pandas. They were the top exhibit here at the zoo. Sadly, last year, the Chinese recalled their pandas, took their pandas back to China, and, uh, and ended. They were here for 50 years. They had, they had pandas at the Washington uh, DC Zoo. Some people say that uh, the panda was uh, was the real star of Washington DC, even higher than the President of the United States. But sadly, that is gone, and we are left here with the Panda Plaza with no pandas. And even if you can't actually see a panda here, you can still grab some Sparrow's Pizza and sit, munch on your pizza, and dream of a time where there once was pandas. But 2024, is the year of the press penny here on the Carpetbagger channel. And while we're not going to see an actual giant panda today, we can see a panda in pressed penny form. So let's get a pressed penny panda made to uh, commemorate our visit to the National Zoo. Well, it's almost as good as the real thing. We can also enjoy this beautiful panda statue here. We can actually pet a panda statue. In some ways, visiting the panda statue is actually better than visiting an actual panda. You can't pet the actual pandas at the zoo, but you can pet the panda statues. Also here they have the panda shop where you can buy panda-based merchandise. It, I'm really sad, I'm really sad for the zoo. They, they really went all in on the panda thing and then, uh, then China yanked them out of here. But they do have us on a technicality here because they do have red pandas 
at the zoo. And I, you know, there was once upon a time where I thought that red pandas were kind of a discount panda. They didn't measure up to the wonder of a giant panda. But now, in some ways, I think I almost like the red panda better. They really are a kind of a beautiful, almost like mythical looking creature. Got the uh, red panda snow globe there. Rosebud. Uh, here we go. This is what the panda enclosure used to be. Thank you for support interest in our giant panda program. Our three giant pandas are now living in China. I feel like uh, like Clark Griswold. He showed up at Wally World or he'd like punch the panda in the face. Yeah, here is the old panda enclosure. Where up till last year you were able to uh, to come here and enjoy pandas. You know, it's being filled with the squeals of joy, people being able to see pandas for the first time in their life. Now, it just echoes with the sound of children's tears when they realize they may never get to see a panda. Where is my John Wayne? Where is my prairie song? Where is my happy ending? Where have all the pandas gone? All right, looks like we wind our way over here to the birdhouse. It says this eagle statue here actually used to be on top of Pennsylvania Station in uh, New York City. It was demolished in 1963. They preserved uh, this massive eagle here for the National Zoo. inside the birdhouse here have uh, pictures of a variety of birds on the wall here and some birds flying overhead it's a cool little environment you got fish down in here oh yeah look at the little horseshoe crab down in the water we also have these little tiny birds on uh, on the shore here it's like they've put this uh, fence in place to keep kids from Grabbing these birds. Hey, birdie. Oh, the birds having a little snack there. Hey, little guys. It says, be kind to ducks here. We'll definitely want to be kind to ducks. Hey, duck. I think you're awesome. I love how you can walk and fly and go in the water. You're like a master of all the elements. Just exit to the lobby there. Uh oh, you see a little bird? There's a little bird up there. Bird, you're not allowed in the lobby. You don't, don't try to sneak in. Okay. Gotta be careful not to let this bird come with us. All right. Let's make a dash for it. Sorry, bird. Also, seeing these machines, they uh, sell these tokens. Is it's five dollars for the silver ones? And ten dollars for the gold ones. These are like, uh, I guess, commemorative tokens. See an elephant there from the overlook. It's like he's helping himself to some branches over there. And here's our consolation prize. I'm just kidding. I love red pandas, but uh, they are the only pandas here, so they have uh, some heavy lifting to do. All right, where are the red pandas? I think the red pandas are resting their little panda heads. <laughs> so, uh, sadly, we will have uh, zero panda sightings today. Oh, look at that. 
Got some otters down there playing in the creek. This guy just threw some live goldfish down there. The otters, uh, oh, otters snapped them up. <laughs> oh, look, it's eating it. Oh, look at there. Eating that goldfish. <laughs> oh, we got another fish. Yeah, just so it's head first. Gnawing, <laughs> gnawing, its, gnawing its head off. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, he's got a he's got a fish too. They love eat they love eating goldfish. Oh oh, he's standing up because he's still hungry. Oh, there he goes. Tossed him a tossed him a mackerel there. Oh, he's going to town. Going to town on that fish. It's a hungry little otter. Oh, look, there's a big, big smelly old bear there. It's a sloth bear. What even is He's acting, acting very slothful. Just laying there, all full of sloth. Fortunately, they put these helpful statues here, so in case uh, in case the sloth bear refuses to wake up, you can come over here and see what a sloth bear looks like. That'll do, sloth bear. That'll do. So this is an interesting concept. You weigh yourself here on this scale, and then it tells you what animals would eat you in uh, in the African savanna. So. Step on the scale. Okay, unfortunately, it looks like the scale is broken. It was it was already broken. I did not break it, um, but I can safely say I am between 200 and 500 pounds, making me a young zebra. And let's see, a lion. You got to match up with the different animals would do to you. So a lion, they would. Uh, oh, I'm the lion's main diet. So I'm the main thing they eat. Uh, they'll eat well and perhaps guard your remains for the day while they finish you off. A cheetah may lift its head to sniff you, but at your side you're too big for me. Yes, I'm officially too big to be eaten by a cheetah. And it says a clan of hyenas would capture you and vigorously fight off other predators while eating you. So I'd be eaten alive, eaten alive by hyenas. That sounds worse. So uh, I'd almost rather a lion just, just kill me and eat me than just being eaten alive. <laughs> by hyenas. But at least I know I'm safe against cheetahs. You know, they call them cheetahs because they cheat you because you show up to the zoo and they hide and you're cheated of the experience of seeing a cheetah. Oh, never mind. There's one. See the cheetah there. Wish he'd get up and run around, but still pretty amazing. Oh, we got a zebra over here. Apparently that's that's what I would be if I lived on the savannah given my uh, given my current weight. Fortunately this zebra gets to hang out all day and eat hay. He doesn't have to worry about being eaten alive by hyenas. Uh oh. Nobody home. I thought the elephants were outside, but uh, let's peek here into the elephant community center. Okay, so this is like the indoor enclosure for the elephants. Uh, we did see them outside. You can see through the door there, there's an elephant, so I guess they can come uh, in and out on their own free will. And then we do have some uh, educational exhibits in here answering the question, what is an Asian elephant? And we have another scale-based exhibit here. Step on the elephant scale. Okay, this one's actually got an accurate, uh, it's actually reading my weight. So this says, let me see, hold still. This is saying 234, 33, 234 pounds, meaning I am, I weigh less, I weigh uh, about uh, 
about uh, 15, 16 pounds less than a uh, baby Asian elephant. This shows how much an elephant eats and drinks in a day. Whole bunch of leaves, different grains. Looks like maybe some, I don't know, dog treats. <laughs> and then quite a bit of water. They are thirsty fellows. And of course, what goes in must come out. This is how much, how much turd an elephant creates in one day. I am actually surprised. I would have thought it would have been a little bit more. <laughs> come outside here, see one of the elephants at his feet are there. Just munching away. We saw how much, we saw how much food they eat inside. He's, uh, he's packing it away. Oh wow, look at this. It's a whole herd of elephants over here. Okay, that's one thing I can say about this zoo. They definitely, uh, definitely have a lot of elephants. And, uh, a great, great elephant display. Oh yeah, look at that. Amazing. Here is Prezwalski's horse. Apparently this is the only living relative of uh, domesticated horses in the wild. The zebras are totally different thing. And it's time for American Trail. American Trails, American Trails, American Trails, American Trails. And here's a beaver dam, but I don't see any beavers. It says, our beavers choose where to hang out. These beavers, these beavers make their own decisions. If you don't see them here, check out the live video from inside the lodge. You'll find the lodge cam monitor on the cave's right-hand wall. All right, we head over to the cave here to see the beaver cam, the live lodge cam. Oh yeah, there's the beaver right there. Although it looks like he's sleeping. Got a sea lion there getting a little lunch. Oh, what's in this cavernous cave here? Oh, there's the sea lion. And definitely something that I like to take note of in zoos is their walkability. Um, you know, different zoos, some zoos are very large, some zoos are very compact. This zoo is a lot of walking. There is, and it's not as much as it just being huge as it is being um, you know, up and down. It feels like the zoo is built in a chasm. It seems like you're either walking up or down. So if you like a strenuous zoo, if you like getting a good workout, I think this is a good zoo. If you, you know, not, is much up for uh, getting exercise, maybe maybe find a calmer, um, more compact zoo. So here we have an indoor area, the uh, Amazonia. Oh wow, check this out. These pink birds just hanging out here on the edge and there's like um, some type of ray there in the bottom. Oh look at that big fish, there's an arowana there swimming along in the water. Yeah, these birds are just out, out in the open. Wow. Oh my gosh, you can look into the Amazon River here, see these massive fish here. There's a little turtle up there as well. Yeah, look at this guy. That is a big fish. Look at this catfish here. It's a mean old, mean old piranha right there. If I uh, stuck my hand in this tank and pulled it back up, my hand would just be skeleton bones. Here we have some fish feasting on their favorite meal, 
romaine lettuce. It's a freshwater Amazonian dolphins here. And it talks about some of the local legends with the dolphins. Local legends say that the dolphins will push a drowning people to shore. You know, very, very friendly, helpful creature. It says the dolphins can magically transform themselves into humans. And uh, they can also, if they don't want to turn all the way into a human, they can just sprout legs and walk around on land. Yes, we are currently down here in the river. It's time to head up into the forest. walking through the forest here and then we can peek down into the river and see some of those giant fish that we saw earlier. There's a turtle swimming right there. And as we leave the Amazon forest we have <gasps> guinea pigs. Hey guys, what are you little guys doing in there? Didn't expect to see guinea pigs. Look at this guy here with the, the shaggy hair. You guys just hanging out here, eating some hay? Just doing little guinea pig things? Oh, here's some uh, information about how, uh, how people eat guinea pigs. There's a taxidermied jaguar here. Interesting to see taxidermied animals at the zoo. What do you think is stranger, seeing taxidermied animals at the zoo or seeing a live animal at a museum? See some poison dart frogs there. There he's hopping, hopping along, doing his little poison hop. If he hopped on you, you'd instantly die. This is an aquatic caecilian, which it says is a type of amphibian. So it kind of looks like a snake or a worm, but it's actually an amphibian, like a frog. Oh yeah, look at that. That is a, that's a wild looking creature. It does look kind of like a giant earthworm. We are here down at the farm where we can uh, pet a cow. Hey cow, mind if I pet you? Oh, that's a nice cow. It's a very friendly cow. Hey there, you're a nice cow. And are you a friendly donkey or do you like biting people? Hey Mr. Donkey, what you doing? Are you friendly? Can I? Can I? No, 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 he doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. It's fine. That's why I asked. I ain't lying. I'm having a lot of fun here at the National Zoo. I get some prairie dogs over here just hanging out in their little prairie. Oh, see him? He stood up. He did the thing. He did the prairie dog thing. He stood up. Oh, there they go. And of course, if you have the urge to pet one of these prairie, do prairie dogs, just pet this one right here. He won't bite. And look at this. We have the conservation carousel. Oh, and I'm excited. This is some animals I've never seen on a carousel before. Crocodile there, the bald eagle, poison dart frog. Oh, look at that octopus. Oh, I like the octopus. Right at the back of orangutan. Oh, there you can run a panda, even though there's no pandas here. All right, let's uh, let's hop aboard. All right, let's find which animal we want to ride on. I think I have a good idea of what I want to uh, to ride. Yeah, I think we're gonna go for it. I think I'm gonna ride on the back of an octopus. That's definitely a first time for me. Also, this blue crab is pretty amazing, but I think, yeah, I think we're gonna go with the octopus. All right, and here we go. We're kind of in the under the sea section here. Again, the crab, other fish right there. I think that's actually a cuttlefish up in front of us. Yeah, I do have a profound love for octopuses. Even though I'm not a vegetarian, octopus is one of the only uh, meats that I will not eat just for, you know, for, for for ethical reasons. I've just, I've seen so many things about octopuses and how smart they are and 
how they behave. I find them to be one of the most absolutely magnificent creatures. I watched this movie, uh, My Octopus Teacher, about a man who befriends an octopus. It's a real documentary. At the end, spoiler alert, the end is very sad. And uh, when the octopus passes away at the end, I, I shed a few tears, more than a few. What's behind us there? Looks like we got a lemur and a bear. And that'll do, octopus. That'll do. And look over here, we have a Triceratops. And this is not just a random Triceratops here. This is Uncle Beasley. You can see right here, it says that Uncle Beasley was in a movie called uh, The Enormous Egg, 1968 movie. I've never heard of this. Has anyone heard of the, uh, the film um, The Enormous Egg? Uh, leave a comment in the comment section says that uh, he was, uh, okay, so he used to be next to the Nat uh, Smithsonian Natural History Museum, and in 1994, he was moved to the zoo. So happy to meet Uncle Beasley here. See the super lazy lion up there. And I know that's one thing I've learned visiting zoos, is lions are super lazy. I guess my cats lay around the house all day too. I guess it's just a cat thing. Yeah, apparently it's kitty nap time here at the National Zoo. See the lazy tiger over there. Oh, oh, oh. Tiger's having a nightmare. Over here we see some artistically rendered chimpanzees. Of course, if we were really this close to a group of chimpanzees, they would uh, rip our arms off and then uh, beat us to death with those arms. And this building is called the Think Tank. Let's, uh, let's see what's inside of here. Okay, we have a museum in here. These are all different animal brains. You gotta compare the sizes. That is a turtle brain, a little turtle brain there. And uh, there's a fox brain, chaos reigns. A walrus spray in there and uh, the teeny tiny little shrew brain right there barely the size of a, of a tooth and uh, the big old whale brain which um, given how big whales are that still seems pretty small <laughs> oh, yeah you can put your hands all over these brains that's a little fox squirrel brain orangutan brain that's my brain right there and then the Asian elephant and another whale brain. Oh, and look at this. This museum here has orangutans in it. Looks like it's orangutan nap time. Talks about self-protection here. How crabs use their shell to protect themselves. And hockey players use hockey uniforms to protect themselves. You can see this guy protecting himself there with his welding mask and his gloves and his boots. Although it looks like he looks like he needs some knee pads. And it says in here we have Alan's swamp monkey. Oh look, there he is. Hey there little guy. <laughs> little swamp monkey. Oh he looks like a fun little friend. there little guy what you doing today oh there's another another swamp monkey up there here we have the reptile house and look at that they have a stegosaurus in the mosaic there which is interesting because you know it's not a reptile. But anyway, let's looks like they're doing some uh, renovations here, but the building is open. See a lizard in there. And this is interesting. It shows how shows how a snake eats 
you see a, a snake unhinges its jaw in order to eat the mouse there. And apparently if a human were to unhinge their mouth to eat an entire loaf of bread, that's what it would look like. That's, what, that's how we would eat if we ate like snakes. I don't know. I, I kind of want to try it. And look at this. It's a Japanese giant salamander right there. That is a whole thing right there. It is a salamander. It's incredibly, incredibly huge. Oh, look, I just moved his head a little bit. And you can see the model here on how big, how big they can get. Oh, look at this massive tortoise over here. Oh, he's gonna take a bath. He's just gently sliding there into the bathtub. Or maybe, maybe he's taking a sip of water. He's gonna take a sip of water. Very slow, slip of, sip of water. There he goes, taking the sip of water there. That's some refreshing water there, Mr. Tortoise. Getting a good gulp there. Yeah, not in a hurry. Not in a hurry to take a sip of the water. Not really in a hurry for anything. Kind of wish I could live my life more tortoise-like. Look who we have back here. It is a Komodo dragon. Look at that big guy. Oh, he just looked at me. Hey Komodo, what's up? Just hanging out, just being a dragon. Yeah, look at this guy. He is just glaring at me. You know, I know they like to bite. They like to bite animals and then follow them around and watch them die and then eat their carcass. I think he would love to eat my carcass. According to this statue, Looks like we have some gorillas over here. Oh yeah, see some gorillas there. That gorilla just clapped. You all heard that, right? The gorilla just clapped. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know they clapped. I did not know gorillas gave applause. But you know what? I applaud you, gorilla. Hooray for you. Oh, look at him, he's pulling on that tree branch. Oh, he just broke the branch off. Now here comes a gorilla. Oh, look at that, gorilla has a baby. Baby on its back. Yeah, a little baby there hiding behind. Oh, he's clapping again. That is a, that is a wacky gorilla. I think these are our final animals of the day as we head into the small mammal house. See the statue of an anteater out front. You see everybody has to everybody has to pull on his nose. And look at this, we are greeted by tiny monkeys. Looks like a lot of the small mammals are sleeping right now, including this sand cat. And here he's fast asleep. Here's the naked mole rat wall. All these different compartments containing the different members of the mole rat family. What are you doing there? Do a, do a little mole rat digging? Oh, what are these mole rats in here doing? This guy looks like he's trying to walk backwards under this piece of lettuce. Trying to use that lettuce as a little blanket there, buddy? You can see all the different mole rat compartments and tubes there. I guess uh, most of them hang out in this one right here. You can see them all writhing around together. This is a Brazilian agouti. 
Hey there, I don't know if I've ever met in a Goody before. No, I've seen him, but there's another one in this box. Oh my goodness, look at this. There's a dwarf mongoose. Hey there, little guy. It's a mongoose. You've been killed any, killed any cobras today? Hey there. It's a dwarf mongoose. Dwarf mongoose. It is a mongoose. Look at all these meerkats in here. I don't know, it looks like they're having a massive meerkat brawl. What are they doing? <laughs> oh, they're all ganging up on that one? They're mean little meerkats. <laughs> oh, look, he successfully fought off all the other meerkats. Because he's super tough. So thank you for joining me here today at the Smithsonian National Zoo. And it's a wonderful zoo, some great animals to see here. Um, but man, it is, you will exercise here at the zoo. It, is quite a walk you walk up up and down kind of always walking at a slope it's pretty expansive the whole zoo takes um i think i've been here for at least probably about five hours um walking through the whole zoo so you will definitely uh, definitely a zoo for those that like walking and uh, those that are looking to get a little exercise while they enjoy their animals which is not a bad thing you know, just some other zoos are more compact or more accessible. The Atlanta Zoo is what I always tell people is a great zoo if you want to see a lot of animals but you don't want to walk a lot. It is one of the most compact yet full zoos that I've been to. So yeah, uh, again, give me suggestions what other zoos you'd like me to check out. I think some of my, some of my favorite zoos. Just, just off the top of my head. The San Diego Zoo is obviously great. Went to the Cincinnati Zoo uh, recently. That was great. Um, the nostalgic the nostalgic choices, the Milwaukee the Milwaukee Zoo. Um, you know, just my part of my childhood is there. Uh, as well as the Brookfield Zoo, which I visited as a child as well in Chicago. An amazing, uh, amazing zoo. I'm trying to think if I'm leaving any out. The North Carolina Zoo is the biggest zoo in the world, I think. And it's bigger than this. Um, a great zoo, but almost a zoo that you can't do in just one day. Um, so yeah, there's different kinds of zoos out there. But, um, and I do, I did love the carousel here. The carousel was really great. I saw some animals on that carousel that I've literally never seen on a carousel before. So that's always great to see a carousel with, uh, with new animals. But thank you for coming with me today. I am heading home. I, I am now, I'm done with the zoo, I'm in the car, I'm going to put home into my GPS and I am going to drive back to my home in the mountains of North Carolina. I'm planning on being there um, for a while, not too long, maybe a week and a half um, or so. I'm going to be in the local area, of course, doing local stuff. I will still be filming while I'm home and then I've got something cooking up here. I've got an adventure that I want to take, that I want to take you guys along with me. So stay tuned for that. I'll give some updates on what I am planning. Um, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun, random stuff. If you hit that subscribe button, it would really help me out, as well as give it a thumbs up, ringing that bell, and all those other helpful things. Um, if you'd like to help the channel in other ways, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more, which a postcard once a month from me to you. Also, uh, selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. Doing personalized messages on Cameo. And, uh, of course, all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag. <laughs>